Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prebmatic. In this week's video, we're talking about suction. So when we're assessing a patient in an emergency situation, one of the first things we have to address is their airway. That's part of your ABC, is airway breathing circulation. So to assess your airway, you have to make sure it's open. And one of the ways we can clear it if there's bile, vomit, or other food stuff in their mouth is with suction into the oropharynx. So we can do that a multitude of different ways. On an ambulance, we have electronic suction with a decanto tip or a yank hour tip which allows us to turn on continual vacuum in the ambulance, take that, put it in the patient's mouth, get most everything out of there and clear that airway. However, in an austere environment, there are some devices that we are taught to use and use that are not quite as good, but offer similar effects for these patients. So no matter if you have an electronic suction catheter on an ambulance or if you are using a manual suction device, the principles remain the same. So we're gonna run through some of those basic steps, what to look for and how to address this kind of situation. And then we're gonna talk about some device specific things with the North American Rescue suction device that they sell. Per the textbook, there are two main rules to follow with suctioning. And we'll talk about some of the nuances to these rules a little bit later on. But the first thing is that we don't wanna be suctioning for more than 15 seconds in the patient's mouth. That's because as we're doing that, we are in theory depriving them of air if they are able to get any air past uh, the vomit or whatever else is obstructing their airway. The second one is, is we want to measure. So similar to an oropharyngeal airway, we wanna take the suction catheter and we wanna measure it from the, from the ear here to the corner of the mouth and we don't wanna go deeper than that. Now, here's the reality of both of those rules. The 15 second rule sounds great on paper and it's something to be regurgitated in a test, but in actuality, we will oftentimes suction until the airway is clear, simply because if we don't get that vomit out of the airway, we're just gonna be pushing it down into the lungs when we're giving rescue breaths with a BVM. And secondly, it's impeding airflow. We need to clear that airway before they can get any oxygen, so we're not actually depriving them of anything. With the measurement, while that is a good rule of thumb to go by, don't go deeper than the length we've selected on here, generally speaking, we never wanna go blind with a suction catheter, but you're opening the patient's mouth and you're going down until you can, see, you can barely see the tip of this. We don't wanna go any farther because that might push obstructions down farther and make it harder to clear. So with that, we can measure or we can kind of eyeball it Either one is generally accepted practice in the pre-hospital environment. Before we go any further, I wanna make it crystal clear that electronic suction is the standard of care. If you have access to electronic suction and you're still using one of these manual devices, you're doing something wrong. However, those electronic suction catheters are not always feasible for the layperson. One, they're cost prohibited. Two, they're pretty bulky and it's a pretty low use item for most civilians or somebody that's just packing a car kit or a rucksack or something for potential medical situations. So today I wanna to go through some manual options and tell you some of the good and the bad that comes with these. All right, so the first device we're gonna talk about is your turkey baster. Now I was originally taught how to do suction with this in my outdoor emergency care class for ski patrol and I carried one of these in my pack. However, the reality is, is that you really should not be using one of these for suction. They do not work very well at all. So number one, the tip is really small. It doesn't get a lot of big chunks into it. Number two, and this one's a little bit of a smaller one, I'll admit, but you just don't have a whole lot of ability to get large volumes out of the patient's airway. In my opinion, my opinion only, this you'd be far better served if you rolled the patient on their side and did a visualized finger sweep to get as much of the obstruction out as you can instead of trying to suction out bit by bit with this device. So I would not recommend a chicken or a turkey baster. There are some people that have some tips and tricks of attaching certain kinds of tubing to these, making it better. Um, there are a lot of kind of backwoods uh, improvised solutions for suction. Uh, nothing that I necessarily prescribe to in these cases. Now, next to this, we have the North American Rescue bulb suction device. Now, this definitely has its limitations and it is very reminiscent of 
a turkey baster. However, it's got a couple big differences. Number one, this collapses down, so this tube gets pushed in, you can wrap that up, and this is a pretty small carry uh, device. Now when we deploy it, we just pull this out, we have a pretty long catheter, and you can see right here on the tip, it is relatively large bore, so we can get some of the bigger chunks out. I will demonstrate this in a little bit here. Now, as we suction, as opposed to the turkey baster, which I put in the patient's mouth, I suck out, and then I put it somewhere else and then do that again, this will allow you to do continuous suction. So as you squeeze this, it sucks it into the bulb, and then as I let it out, it's got a one-way valve, it'll push it into the bag instead of pushing it back into the patient's mouth in theory. So it works relatively well. Now, I'll tell you, when somebody has a lot of secretions or it's a uh, really chunky vomit, which is you know uh, something that you encounter quite a lot in EMS, these start to fail pretty quickly, and these are just a stopgap until you can get them something else. So while I do carry this, and I do like this as a suction device for uh, portable means, like I said before, it's not the standard. So for a quick demonstration, I have two different liquids. On the left, we just have plain water with some green food coloring, so you can actually see it in the reservoir. And on the right, we have two-week-old chicken tikka masala from our local Indian place, uh, which is way more reminiscent of what you're actually going to be seeing in a pre-hospital environment because, you know, it's kind of whatever will go wrong or whatever can go wrong will go wrong. This is always what the patient had to eat right before you see them. So with the water, this should work relatively well. We take the suction, we insert it into the patient's mouth as we're looking, and then we can just start squeezing the bulb syringe and I'll start draining into that bag, but it's not pushing it back into the patient's mouth. Now you can see that this drains the cup pretty fast, works pretty well. Now it does get hung up periodically and you have to kind of give it a second, but as I squeeze back, it is filling it into the reservoir bag. So this fills with 650 milliliters, which is a fair amount there, and you can see it in the bottom and how much we got up with just three suctions of it. However, where I'm a little bit more curious to see is if it will work in the chicken tikka masala, uh, because this is pretty viscous stuff. So as we insert into the chicken tikka masala and we start squeezing it, it's common, you have to jimmy uh, the bulb a little bit to make it work, but it actually does appear to be working. It is getting a little bit hung up on it though. So when you have the continuous electronic suction, um, it works a little bit better because you can just kind of stir it around, get down into it, and it's going to pick it up with a little bit more efficiency. This one, I think I've actually completely clogged it. There we go, got a little bit more. So. Like I said, not my go-to, this is really gross, when it comes to a suction device, but will work in a pinch if that's all you have. So, like I said before, the process for suctioning a patient is, number one, we don't wanna do it for more than 15 seconds if feasible, but this isn't a hard and fast rule. We also don't wanna go super deep and go beyond where we can see the tip of that catheter. Generally speaking, we can measure from the bottom of the ear to the corner of the mouth. Um, and then when we do that, we also want to be suctioning on the way out uh, while we're doing it. Pretty simple procedure, but it is potentially life-saving. Now, just for kicks, let's try the chicken baster. I'll just do the water into the chicken tikka masala and how much that gets. So we get a little bit there, way less efficient. So that's just doesn't quite work as well. And now I've made a really nasty concoction that I need to clean up in a little bit. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll have links to this device and a couple other options for you. Uh, if you're looking to carry a portable suction, also leave links from, for some electronic suction if you really wanna go big and overachieve. Uh, just know that this is way more cost effective for you. So like I said, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next week.